Hello, this is Tina Tiainen, and you're watching Tina's Ultimate Guide to Wool Dread Extensions. Today, we'll learn how to spring your style to the next level. This episode is all about curly dreads. Now before I share with you the process of how to make these, I'm going to tell you how to maintain them because it's very different than wearing straight dreads. Now unlike straight dreads, which never lose their shape, curly dreads will loosen over time. So you're going to need to recurl them eventually. I recommend having a few backup dreads just in case some of your dreads go straight. You can tell how well felted they are when you actually wear them. They might look nice and curly when you start, but if they're not well felted, then they're gonna go straighter on you before the other ones. So you wanna make sure you have some extra ones just in case. I've had these dreads for about a month and it is time to remove them. So these are what you can get if you have them in for one month of wear. There are, however, a few of them I swapped out, like uh, I think this one is one of the newer ones. But most of these are one month old, so the curls last pretty well, even through abuse. The better felted your dreads are to begin with, the better of a curl they're going to keep. So make sure you start out with well felted dreads. I find that thicker dreads tend to keep a curl better than thinner dreads, and that's probably because there's more material holding the curl together. If you have tapered ends, that means that the ends of them are going to go straight faster than the top parts. One phenomena of curly dreads is that they like to interact with each other and sometimes they'll curl up in DNA strands or in triple strands and if you don't like that, just brush them through with your fingers and get the little interactive ones apart. But also, sometimes this can be bad. If you have grown out roots, the root can twist and twist and twist, causing your hair to be pulled by the roots. So you want to make sure that you untwist any dreads that are twisting up. And if your hair is getting long enough that you can pinch your fingers between your hair root and the dread root, then it's time to reinstall them. I find that the dreads in the very back on the bottom tend to twist more than the other ones do. Avoid pulling on your curls because every time you pull, that's gonna loosen them up just a little bit. So avoid hairstyles with tightness like ponytails and pigtails and reserve those towards the end of your installation when your dreads are gonna be replaced anyway. Minimize the moisture and wetness with curly dreads. You do not wanna get curly dreads wet because the weight and the moisture of them will straighten your curls. I tested them in the sauna and shower and they failed, they became wavy. So you want to avoid getting them wet. So every time you shower, you can wrap your head in a plastic bag. I'll show you. Now you're going to tie these two straps behind your neck. And that's gonna make this like a waterproof little thing for your dress. There. <laughs> now you'll look real good. And uh, tuck any extra hairs that poke out, dreads, poke them back in. <sighs> I'm ready for a shower. And uh, you may want to double bag it because sometimes these have holes in them. <laughs> Don't tie the back too tight that you can't get it off unless you want to cut it. Don't cut your dreads. Um, also, you can reuse the bag to save the world. Do you like my look? It's also good to wear the plastic bag when you're applying makeup, especially if it's powdery, because that way it won't get in your dress. If you want to clean your scalp, what you can do is carefully section off different parts of your hair, wrap them up in bags very well, and then just clean the roots of your hair with super diluted shampoo with its residue free, and then rinse really well. However, I don't recommend this because the more moisture, the looser the curls, so it will affect your curls. So uh, I would just hold out until you can. Apply products to scalp only. 
not two dreads. To spot clean your scalp, gently rub the scalp with a damp cloth. There are some other things you can do for your scalp if you want to get rid of some funk. Coconut oil is antibacterial, antifungal, can help you with dandruff and funk and odor, so you can apply that to your scalp. It will absorb into your hair very well, however it may look a little bit greasy at first, but it will help with some funk. Apply warm coconut oil to the scalp before bed. Leave in overnight and then wipe off leftover oil with a warm damp cloth. You can also try things like tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is antifungal, antiseptic. It can treat your itch, dandruff, infection, irritation, sunburn, psoriasis, fleas, ticks, and lice, mold, and mildew in wool. Tea tree oil. Ask your doctor before use if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or have a skin condition. Do not use on babies under six months old and also discontinue use if irritation or rash develops. Apple cider vinegar or ACV dissolves buildup and residue, fights dandruff, and is antibacterial and anti inflammatory. For apple cider vinegar dilute for frequent use, mix one tablespoon with eight cups of water and then spray diluted mixture to the scalp. Do not use on open sores. Peppermint oil, baby, treats your itchiness and dandruff. Dry or oily scalp because it balances your pH and also lice. Apply the peppermint oil diluted. Ask a doctor before use if you're pregnant or breastfeeding because mint decreases your milk production. And uh, you can also try Egyptian musk oil for a nice ancient perfume. If it worked for the ancient Egyptians, it works for me. Egyptian musk oil is deodorizing, a slow release perfume, and it's activated by heat and sweat. Most Egyptian musk oils are vegetarian friendly. Get a plant-based musk, synthetic musk, or white musk that is macrocyclic musk based. Avoid white musks that are based on oils that use aromatic nitro musk and polycyclic musk as they are carcinogens, aka they give you cancer. Do-it-yourself scalp treatment recipe. One tablespoon of organic coconut oil, two drops of tea tree oil, two drops of peppermint oil, two drops of vitamin E, stab a gel pill capsule, and mix them and apply to the scalp as needed. A little bit goes a long way. A way to keep your curls alive longer and in better shape is to wrap them up when you're sleeping. Tie up your dreads in either a scarf or a bag or a t-shirt so that you don't get lint and stuff like that stuck in your dreads overnight. <laughs> okay, so what you do is get a t-shirt and put it over your head like normal, but don't put your arms in. If you have a lot of dreads, you have to put your dreads in the shirt first. Okay, so now you have the t-shirt over your head, but don't put your arms in. Now you're gonna put the t-shirt back up over your dreads. And you're gonna pull the t-shirt, <laughs> you're gonna pull the t-shirt so that your face comes through. <laughs> there. Now you can pull the t-shirt up. You can get a hair tie. Tie this closed, grab the sleeve with no dreads, tie it here, tie it there, and tie all of these to each other, and you have a really silly looking yet effective hair protection nighttime kit. And uh, as you do this, it kind of squishes your dreads in, so it kind of goes back to a little bit of a spiral. So uh, this would protect your head from drool, dog hair, and uh, attractiveness. <laughs> it's probably not very good looking, but it'll keep you good looking when you're awake. <laughs> okay, I'm taking this off. Now curly dreads look larger and they also feel larger. So if you're sleeping, what you can do is put your pillow here and put your dreads up and sleep on them. <laughs> that way. Ta-da! If you want to recurl a few dreads without uninstalling them, what you can do is curl them around the rod and sleep with that on overnight and then take them out in the morning. They'll be a little more curly, not as curly as using the washing machine and dryer, but still curlier. Although curly dreads look like more volume all around, towards the scalp they look a little bit sparse because instead of laying flat against the scalp, 
they kind of come up a little bit and then do curls so you're gonna see a little bit more scalp so you want to concentrate like with smaller squares towards the top of your head when you install them that way it's gonna cover more of the scalp and then you can get away with having fewer of them underneath with larger squares because it's gonna be underneath the top which is gonna be like covering it up so you're good also, designs that look good on straight dreads may not translate as well to curly dreads. And uh, if you want to write something down one side or have an intricate pattern, you might not see the whole thing because it's going around in a loop. So uh, keep in mind, it is different when designing. A well-felted dread should keep its shape for around one to two months. And that's about how long you want to have your dreads in anyway. So every time you take your dreads out, recurl them the same way. Before you throw your dreads back in the washing machine when you want to reinstall them, make sure that you fuzz bust them. Get a fabric shaver or clothes shaver, whatever you want to call it, and go over your dreads to get the lint off. That way you're not felting the lint into your dreads. And it should go without saying, but make sure that you wash yourself and detangle your hair between installations. Maintenance part one complete! You are now ready. Proceed to part two for a tutorial on how to activate curly dreads. But first, click the like button on your way out. Thank you!